Hello Fabricators, welcome back. We are doing another deep dive. Actually, this is more like an intro dive. Intro dive into Fabric. Tommy and I have been beating up for about 45 minutes the data sets, the default data set of Fabric. So when you create a lake house, you get a default data set. We're gonna go in, we're gonna demo what happens inside that default data set. What can you do? How do you modify it? And then very quickly, we might build a report or two, depending on time. All right, Tommy. Let's dive in. Let me share your screen and we'll jump right in here. Yeah, Mike, you sound like my open to philosophy class in college. We're going to introduce something deep here. So, so far, we've already touched on two areas of our lake house. And we've right now have touched on the SQL endpoint and we've touched on the lake house. Well, you've noticed that when you create a lake house in Microsoft Fabric, there's three real elements that are created with the same name. And the last one we're going to touch on today is going to be our default data set. So let's go ahead and click in here and select it. And this should look very familiar for those who are already building reports in Power BI. Because Mike, this is a very similar view to looking at a data set for a simple Power BI data set. Totally. This, this UI looks almost identical. As Tommy navigates here through some of the menus at the top, you'll notice there are some distinct differences because this is a default data set right. and not a normal Power BI data set. Exactly. And one of the things I really like here is depending on how much you build up your lake house, um, and you'll see this in the other views as well, is see what items already exist here. I can actually see whether they're upstream or downstream, meaning what's dependent on what. The SQL endpoint and the lake house are depend, um, influence the data set. So they're yes. upstream. If yep. I had and a report created, that would be downstream. So that's a really great relation view that they have already available here. One of the big items here is going to be looking at our top ribbon. And again, really familiar to those who've been building reports, but there are a few distinct differences. And one is the refresh icon here. So when I actually go here to the refresh history, you'll notice that I didn't, one, did not have an option to refresh the data set. Mike, why is that? Yeah, so we did a little homework and investigation here. And um, what we saw earlier, as we were refreshing things, if our table fails, You'll actually notice here in this refresh area where this data set, the default data set is using a direct lake access. So that means when you have analysis services, you're, this is essentially a look at the analysis services engine. This is the definition of the data model. And when we make tables, it queries right from this data set right down into the lake tables beneath it. So it's using direct lake. If there were changes to your data set, uh, you would probably see those direct lake data sets, if there's any failures that appear, they would appear here in the direct lake refreshing area. Exactly. So we have that direct lake option now to look at all the refreshes that occur that way. We also have the same ability here to create a report, um, or we can also auto create. And this is under the create a report right next to the refresh. We can start from scratch, auto create. Uh, Mike, you, you and I have taken the liberty of creating some relationships already. So why don't we actually click on auto create and just see what occurs here. And this is going to use our relationships in the default data set uh, to see what we're most interested in. We also have the option to pre-select data, but why don't we just go ahead and look at the report now. And already it's actually doing some pretty neat things. It's actually looking at our summer of salary based on uh, related tables. I can see my sum of salary based on the decade the salary based on the birth country of a baseball player based on the team. No surprise. Yankees have the highest salary, but this is just an auto created report. So let's go back to our learn fabric. We're not going to save this. We're going to go back to the default data set. Now tell me there's it, one more yeah. option here on the far left hand side. We also see the file option. Oh yes. Um, under file. I think there's actually a couple interesting points here to note is when you use the file option under a normal data set, you would see many more options. You could technically download the data set if it's right. not uh, too large. But in here, you're actually seeing a simplified menu of just taking you right to the permissions or the settings. So I just wanted to point that out. If you are familiar with the file option in data sets previously, you're going to have a limited, more limited view on this, this data set here. That's a great point. And the reason why there's nothing to download is because there's nothing to download. There's technically everything's living in fabric in yeah. uh, the lake house. They're not going to let you change this or bring it down locally to change it. it. It sounds like this is a locked feature that directly attaches to the lake and it's being managed by Microsoft 
as a direct artifact of the lake house. Very much so. Very much so. So why don't we actually take a look at, obviously we can see there's analyze and Excel here already, but why don't we actually look at the lineage view? And this is really neat. Again, already available in Power BI data sets, but now with so many more rich features or probably a richer view because we're dealing with lake houses. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the lineage view here. And I'm going to go to the open lineage view. And again, this is going to bring us to everything that's upstream and downstream with our particular data set. So we can see here we have our lake house, which is going to the SQL endpoint, which is finally what we're looking at is the data set. And I can also see the impact across workspaces if I were to have other reports or even other data or just really here, just other reports that were built off the default data set. And we'll see some more of these things or these actions or these population of artifacts appear as we create reports, paginating reports on top of the data set. Very much so. And obviously this gets a, a few more steps if you're building more things off the lake house. But again, we are focused on the default data set. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the data set view here. And why don't we actually go and finally look at this right hand side. And this is very similar. Again, I can preview some of the tables and the columns here. And this is all going to be available here looking at the tables. And I can either default create a paginated report or I can just start with a preview. So what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to select a column from my year group, my decade. Now, when I start this way, it's a raw data view. Nothing's grouped or summarized as of yet. If I want to do that, all I have to do is create a paginated report. One quick thing I want to show here, depending if you have measures already in your data set, there's this show query item over here that will actually show me a query that I can use because there is the data set or the DAX query API. So if I wanted to copy and paste this and use this in an API, I could. And you'll notice the DAX statement here looks different. There is a word called evaluate, select these columns and then order by statements. When you're writing DAX, you don't typically see this. This is DAX being written by the DAX engine, and this is something you would find in DAX Studio or other third-party tools you would use to create a DAX evaluated statement and return a table of data. Again, just to be aware, this doesn't look like your normal DAX. Right. It won't look like a measure equals value, which you're typically used to seeing inside Power BI Desktop. Yes, it is the secret sauce that makes all of Power BI running all in the background. But why don't we actually just go ahead and create a paginated report and just show a summarized view of my decades and home runs. So I'm going to click on the paginated view and you'll see now it's actually summarizing the view rather than showing all the, uh, the rows. And I'm going to go ahead on my right hand side where I can see all of my tables. I'm going to choose batting and I'm going to actually choose a column that is an implicit measure. So I'm going to go ahead and choose home runs here. And, and why do we know this is an implicit, yeah. Tommy? What tells me this is an implied measure? It's our sigma symbol that's actually saying that it's auto summed. So yeah, this I is believe a column. Sigma, yes. Yeah, it's a column that is a number, and we're allowing the, the the dimensions or the analysis services to say, "Hey, we're going to let you do some sort of math to it." Exactly. Now we can always turn that off, even if it is a default data set. Obviously, this is all auto created, and this is how we start. But I can see here quickly. Now, how do I know I'm looking at the sum of everything as well? Just my final verification. I can go to the build view and I can see here, I can see the year group and the sum of HR. So if I add another number here, I can do the same thing. If I want to make this the average of HR, I can do the same as well. So what is the average amount of home runs created in a given or uh, hit in a given year? Four. Four. And three. <laughs> <laughs> Which could be, yeah, could be up for discussion. So. And that's our paginated review. So, and those are really the big items here when it comes to looking at. Let's let's save this one back, Tommy. So go here. Yeah. Let's go to file. Let's go file. Let's save this back to our workspace and let's see what happens here. We have a little bit more time left. Let's check it out and see what happens if we build something on top of this. And does this in fact give us a report here that we are also doing? And what I'll do also on my end is I'll create a quick auto created report and I'll save that as well back to the workspace. And so Tommy's working on paginated reports. I may be working in Power BI reporting as well. Yep. So we're using the same data set all inside the service and generating our two different reports. And here we have our paginated report already available in our workspace. And then you're and seeing this in the, you're in the lineage, and are you showing the lineage view? 
Uh, no, not the. Oh, let's go to the lineage view. Yeah, let's go to the lineage view. Let's see what's doing. This is really feeling awesome to me. Like I really like the like this is really team level working now at this point. Tommy's yeah. doing things. I'm working on stuff. We're now creating artifacts together at the same time. And look at that. Look Boom. At that. So Tommy has his HR paginated report for home runs. Sorry, HR home runs paginated report. And I have my auto generated report that came right from the service. And now you're seeing when we go back to the direct lake data set, it's now showing us the downstream artifacts. So if we go back over to the to the data set again, oh, data actually, set, yep. Yep. If we go back into our data set, we can again go back in and see exactly where those downstream artifacts are living. So Tommy's going to open it up here. We now have new artifacts down here in the bottom. And it's saying these are downstream artifacts. They're being used in with this data set. And these are the upstream items here. And if you go to the, isn't there a button there on the right hand side as well, Tommy? Um, the lineage up at the very top, the button lineage and then impact analysis. You'll also see those items here on the right hand side. These are the upstream and downstream items that are being affected childs, meaning directly related. I'm not sure what downstream items yet means, but we'll figure that out as we get more things in here. It looks like it's just pointing at the reports for today. Excellent. Well, we're going to continue going down this route of learning more things. I hope you liked our little introduction around data sets or the default data set coming out of our lake house. There's definitely a lot more here. Tommy, we're discussing this for about 45 minutes beforehand to figure out what is the simplest thing we can demo to get started. So there's a lot more coming. Uh, we're going to have to talk a lot more about what we can do in this data set now that we have this built in the service. One thing I'll note here, because I'm going to point on this all the time, we did all this work inside PowerBay.com in the service. So what you're seeing now is we didn't even touch desktop to build some reports and make things happen now. And I think this is a pivotal moment as we think about what we're doing in this new Fabric ecosystem. This is really adding capability to the service. We're doing a whole lot more work with models, reports, engineering of data all inside the cloud. So this, I think, is a pivotal moment. And stay tuned. There's going to be probably a lot more of this coming forward. And if you listen to our podcast, it's a prophecy fulfilled. From episode one. From episode one. <laughs> well, please, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. Follow us. And there's many more content coming. Please share this with somebody else. Thank you very much. And we'll catch you next time.